Quick example, the runners, you know, a very, very well executed runner is a very, you're showing so much, so much your athleticism, you know, how, how you can run and how you can swing and you can sprint and jump and how right away you hit the water, you're right away into swimming because you want to utilize that speed that you have on. So just one simple thing, it, it shows you a lot of athleticism. And then, for example, we start doing uh, runners with our college group and they were not the best so right away we're like well you're supposed to be in college you're supposed to be, a, you're supposed to be an athlete you know you need to do this right so we went through the process of teach them again how to do a very well run and then do a big swing and a good jump and right away to their swimming so I think the athleticism you're correct uh, especially in short course yards is very very important to have athletes jump into the pool no doubt about it. And Dave, why is physical literacy such an important piece of the, the structural framework of your program? Well, at the end of the day, swimming is one of the most athletic things you can do. And we're doing it in an environment that's very foreign to the human body. I mean, God didn't make any of us to be swimmers in the water. We're supposed to be on land running away from dinosaurs. So it's a, you know, I think when you think about taking a, a human and putting them in the water, you know, it's really evident when you're out here in California, you know, and Javi and I both surf and they would be sitting out there on the surfboards and doing all this stuff. And there'd be seals swimming underneath us or dolphins coming by us. And yeah, we really suck at swimming. <laughs> I mean, every every human isn't good. So I mean, I had Ryan Lochte, who's maybe one of the most aquatic guys in the world, of the history of the world, but he wouldn't hold up to, to Nemo, much less to any dolphin that's coming cruising by. So what we're trying to do is really ultimately get them to have a high level of water acumen, but taking the athleticism to that ability. Now, obviously, in short course, it's way different because you, you power off each wall. And that's why you're seeing the big difference between the guys in college that are going 129s and the 200 freestyle, but they can't go 146 and 200 meter freestyle. Uh, it's, it's they're, they've learned how to use the power off the wall again and again and again. And so, and so that's going to be even more athleticism. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, Javi is a, a strength and conditioning coach as well. So he actually works with the guys in the weight room and, and does a lot of bounding work with them, a lot of connection stuff, uh, some of the Olympic lifts and things like that. The whole goal of all that is to build the most explosive, best connected athlete that we can possibly have. It's not necessary to be the strongest or certainly not the key to be the biggest. It was about being the biggest and, then no way Anthony Urban wins the 50 freestyle in the last Olympics because he was by far the smallest in the final of the 50 free. But, you know, power and explosiveness, water acumen, all sort of packaged up uh, and using a race strategy at the right time is the art of putting the whole thing together. But foundationally, given that especially with our young kids aren't being taught to, to, to jump and play in school, uh, you cannot learn how to do that better by using your thumbs and, and, and playing, playing on the computer. You have to actually go outside and climb a tree and run down the street or play taco football or do the things that we used to do. Well, well we have to bring that into the club program now. And uh, with Coronado, with the younger kids, with Coronado Swim Association, with Team Elite Kids, we're uh, building in that athletic development on land and then bringing it to water. With the other end of it, with the professionals, it's much more individual. So we have a dry land coach, Ophir Gonin, who comes in twice a week, works with connection pieces. Yesterday I had them walking on stability balls and they're having to move the stability ball and step on the stability ball, move it again and then step on it. Just really playing balance games and, and uh, sort of athleticism games. And then, and then again, we bring that into the water. Usually right after we do dry land, we'll go right into the water and work on whatever we worked on on land. So if we're working on planks and core, then we'll do some uh, sort of turtle kicks where you'll keep, they'll try to keep their lower, their, their back flat and as high as it can be while they're moving uh, or just sculling drills where they're staying really high and paying particular attention to the lumbar spine that they don't have a big sway in it and really trying to set up their, their uh, position in the water so that we can get, uh, so that we can swim through the, 
least amount of water and cause them the least resistance because that's where most of the gains are going to be made is eliminating resistance, not by increasing power. So it, yes, it's power, but the power, the goal of power is to help uh, develop a body and an athlete that knows how to manage their bodies in the water.